Welcome to Morning Joe with Tom, with your host, Thomas Chappelle. Get ready to listen to real-life stories from inspiring leaders who have overcome incredible challenges to rise to the occasion. If you're ready to add some pep to your morning with a new outlook on leadership, then grab your cup of coffee. It's time to be inspired. Here's your host, Thomas Chappelle. Hey, good morning, Scott. Thank you for sh- for showing up, uh, and I really appreciate your time today. Listen, uh, for all my listeners, uh, Scott and I met at the PCCI uh, event that was going on. We spent several weeks together, and he just turned out to be an amazing individual. Uh, his coaching skills, his leadership skills are just, um, you know, way up there. So, uh Scott, if you would uh, introduce yourself to the community, I would really appreciate it. Sure. Hey, good morning, Tom. It's good to see you again, and thank you for your kind words. Uh, Well, I'm uh, Scott Stanger. I live here in Kansas City, Missouri, and grew up here. My wife is from Texas. I I went to school at Baylor, got my accounting degree, uh, and uh, went to work as a CPA at Pricewaterhouse in Houston, I fell into a consulting group, a very fast-paced consulting group of business turnaround services for Fortune 500 companies um, across the the globe. And as you can imagine, I mean, when you're dealing with Fortune 500 companies that are either uh, entering bankruptcy or facing Mm -hmm. bankruptcy or trying to emerge from bankruptcy, those are crisis situations. We're brought in by the board board of directors or the, uh, the creditors or... Uh, shareholders, somebody's brought us in to solve a problem. And it's not just a tax or audit situation. I mean, we literally, we had a a, a group of uh, subject matter experts, whether it was marketing or it was a, a, the C-suite review or manufacturing processes, whatever it might be, we, we assembled a team of experts to uh, measure the performance of that business, look at their, their best of class peers, see what they were doing differently, and then help them to attain those um, those same results by turning around their operations. So I did that for about six years. It was a very intense environment. And I realized this is not what I wanted to do long term. It was a meat grinder. It was a great training ground to apply all the things I learned in theory in, in college and business school. But uh, this was, this was uh, not a long term prospect for me. And about that time, my family's business back here in Kansas City, it's a large construction business, uh, landed Walmart as an account, a nationwide account. Mm -hmm. And we did multiple uh, Sam's Clubs and super centers from New York to Hawaii and a few down in South America. And so they they asked me to return and and to help them navigate the the taxes and the finances and the uh, the HR laws and so on in, in the various uh, jurisdictions, the states and municipalities and so on. So I did that uh, for the first seven years. I was a vice president and CFO. And then in 2000, I became the CEO president. Uh, and it was in that moment that, you know, I, I became a, a follower of Jesus Christ uh, in my senior year in high school in 1980. Uh, and so I've been faithfully walking with the Lord and my family as a, as a husband and father and serving in our church. And uh, but I had what I call a King Solomon moment there in, in 2000. And that is when the when the gravity of the moment hits you that, wow, uh, I'm here at the helm of an organization with hundreds of families out there that are fed, you know, and provided by a paycheck that they earn serving our customers. And you just you just realize, OK, God, why have you put me in this situation? I mean, I, I want to come in here and I want to honor you and glorify your son. Um, but I think that aha moment for me was it's something bigger than just handing out Bible tracts or coming in and being positive and, and so on. Uh, it really, I think that began to unfold an adventure, a progressive adventure that's still going on today, you know, 20 some years later of fling wide the door, <laughs> let our heavenly father come in, roll up his sleeves and partner with us in our endeavors. And so it was a, it was a, it was a wonderful time uh, of, of learning the ropes of walking with our heavenly father, empowered by his Holy Spirit. And uh, yet at the same time, there was a lot of friction in my family's business. We didn't, all, not everybody mm-hmm. embraced the same faith values. And so mm-hmm. it created a lot of conflict behind closed doors. 
And eventually uh, a, an opportunity arose for me to return to Texas to join some friends who were launching a new construction business down there. And they had long-term aspirations that this is definitely from the ground up, it's going to be a, a an organization that honors Jesus Christ. And, and I don't mean putting fish stickers on our, you know, the vehicles and, and a cross on your business card. And I'm not... I'm not diminishing that or anything, but I'm just saying that we we actively uh, lived out our faith with prayer and meetings, with mm-hmm. with uh, vision, mission, values that that we knew were inspired by a scripture or something. Whether we put a, a you know a chapter and verse up there, it didn't it wasn't important. It was the way that we emphasized it, and we communicated to people, and and collectively lived it out. So I did that for seven years. Um, down in Waco, Texas, and then some family changes happened back here in Kansas City. We had our first grandchild, and my wife really got the itch, like, we're going to go back and we're going to be around that that grandbaby. So we came back here, and I joined a a consulting slash coaching community. It's an executive coaching community of of about 150 uh, kingdom-minded businesses. It's based here in Kansas City. It's now more than 10 years old. But we've expanded into Colorado, and we now have a, a strategy to expand in, into uh, four or five other states here over the next few years. Um, and we do many things in this community. I mean, one of the one of the foundation stones of what we do is once a month we come together. Uh, each we're called growth catalysts. Each growth catalyst leads a, a half day workshop of uh, ten to twelve businesses completely autonomous, you know, once a month we do this and we bring together those 10 to 12 businesses. And we, as our slogan says, we sharpen, challenge and inspire. Uh, We also say that we like to grow the top line and optimize the bottom line and enrich the storyline. And so it's it's a place where we we come together and we're sharing our business uh, goals and plans and we're helping each other um, fine tune those goals, holding one another accountable, celebrating uh, the results. And, and when, when we don't achieve the results we're hoping for, then, then we get behind them and, and boost their confidence and pray for them, uh, analyze their strategies and, and their, their action items. And uh, so we do that once a month. And then two weeks later, I do one on one coaching sessions with each of those mm-hmm. executives. Again, revisiting the things that they've said in the in the, the workshop and I know what their goals are for the year. And so we sit down and, and help them move forward with those. And then we do uh, one more thing in our community. And that is uh, once a quarter, we come together all 150 companies and their leadership teams. Uh, and we'll have a, a well-known speaker like um, David Green, who is the CEO of Hobby Lobby or Dan Cathy, the CEO of Chick-fil-A. These leaders, uh, Authors as well come in and we'll do a half day workshop of activities and and Q&A sessions to uh, help us as business leaders extend and expand the things that we're learning in the the workshops and the one on one coaching. So we've got our, our teammates there. Maybe they're a follower of Christ, maybe not. But we're going to create an environment that is, um, you know, very business focused, but it integrates our, our Christian faith, mm-hmm. our values, the principles and from God's word and uh, do it in an environment where uh, the, the, the people collectively are brought in across the city. So there are lots of other faith work integrating organizations like C12 and Convene and, and uh, I applaud their efforts. But I think what we uniquely do is we have a vision for bringing the kingdom across our marketplace of the Kansas City, or as we often refer to ourselves as the, the heart of America here in the Midwest. And so that's a that's my story, and, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, that was an awesome story, and I appreciate that. So, uh, Scott, uh, how would someone reach out to you for more information on how you can serve them? Sure. Well, the best easiest way is to go right to the Acumen website, and that's uh, acumenimpact.com. And on there, there's a a little tab that says about us, and it has uh, several of us growth catalysts and a profile. It has my my email link as well. Uh, You can go out to LinkedIn, of course, and and find me. 
Um, I've, I've got my, my executive coaching, but I also have retained my CPA and I have a CFO consulting business. So you can, I'm doing the same thing. I mean, I'm just bringing it in a, at a different angle inside of businesses as a CFO, outsourced CFO service. But uh, LinkedIn, the acumenimpact.com are the easiest ways to reach me. Well, that's great. And I appreciate that, Scott. Uh, any final words for our listeners? Well, um, it, it, this this is a leadership podcast here and leadership is is so important to me i mean very passionate about it and and i always want to couple that word servant leadership i mean um when i think of an org chart for instance i like to turn it upside down and and the the executives uh are placed in a greater role of serving a greater uh capacity of serving and modeling uh, the values that we're we're all subscribing to in in the organization that we've been called to. So um, I know that over the years, uh, whether it was down in it was in my family's business or it was down in Texas or it's in this coaching community, it's all about bringing servant leadership. Uh, and and as I've looked at leadership over the years and tried to figure out what are some of the most important things that I could say to a leader, I think. Um, I would start with this, and that is have a good self-awareness. Uh, wow. Have a good self-awareness. However, even before that self-awareness proceeds uh, humility. You know, God's word says that he resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. I think if we can come in first and foremost and embrace an attitude of humility and then uh, bring that into uh, fostering a self-awareness of, okay, I'm not all that in a bag of chips. Uh, you know, that's that's the humility part. But then when we look around and we assess who we are and who others are, we see our limitations, we see our strengths, we see this the similar things in, in someone else. But collectively, then we can bring that teamwork that glorifies God because we're, we're all just, a, a, we're all image bearers of him. And we're all a, a, a small little facet of his self-expression in us and um, there's something there at the kernel the core of us that God is redeeming through his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that is glorifying uh, the Godhead and uh, I think it starts with humility and then having a self-awareness that's the those are the the thoughts I would leave with any leader wow thank you that was a lot of great value there and I really appreciate it Scott, thank you very much for being with us today. My pleasure, and, Tom. Uh, you continue to live blessed and be highly favored, my friend. You too. God bless you. Thanks for listening to Morning Joe with Tom. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. See you next time for more real-life stories and inspiration on Morning Joe with Tom.